Whenever I see an effect and I feel that I know its creator is quite the real deal, I'll first try to see if I too can attain it, and then make a video to try to explain it, with one single goal, to take a complex thing and break it into pieces that aren't so perplexing. We just need a starting point, it doesn't matter where, an icon, a color, or in this case a square. The first things it needs are a size and a border, the R, G, and B would come next in the order, and I suppose we should cover how it looks when we hover. Here there's a few different things to discover. You've probably guessed that there's a transition from hidden to a more visible condition. To that I would offer one single correction, that we forgot to consider the mouse's direction. While on the way out, it's slow and consistent, on the way in, the change should be instant. With this singular tile, we've laid the foundation, paving the way for some more explanation. But first, I'll extend you a swift invitation, and believe me, I have some good information. If you need a quick way to build applications from a database layer to authentication, I'd recommend AppRite with no hesitation. Their service is quite an impressive creation. What's that you hail from the Firebase Nation? No worries, they're wizards in easy migration. From here I'll extend you my recommendation to give them a try with a quick registration. We've made it this far, that much is clear, but somehow we still need to make our way here. Say that we wanted our grid 10 by 10. We could copy our tile again and again, but I think that I want the lazy solution. A function could do it with one execution. A line of code each for the tile and container, and the for loop right here will complete the remainder. A few steps inside is all that we'll do, cloning is one and appending is two. Though a singular tile was fine before, our loop is now giving us 99 more. Right about now, you might be discovering each of our tiles has the same coloring. To pick out a few, we'll use an inspector, then vary each one with the nth child selector. While a repeatable pattern is certainly practical, I think the randomness could be more maximal. One thing I learned is that patterns are stackable. No need to be perfect, just make sure they're passable. Now why don't we look and see what we've missed? The icons are probably topping the list. Fontossum is usually the place that I go. Affiliate link in description below. When I need a pattern, at least one that's repeatable, I typically say a design tool is unbeatable, but CSS backgrounds are auto-repeated, so that's not the step that we need completed. We can change the size here, that's all perfectly fine. The real issue, however, is in how they align. Since there isn't a property to spread them apart, maybe the icon is a good place to start. See, the image itself will keep its dimension. It's the icon inside that needs our attention. Now we just simply take our revision and line it back up in the proper position. What we are left with is a straightforward objective a little rotation, and an adjusted perspective. You could opt to use the original as reference, it's really just a matter of personal preference. After we add some more columns and rows, we could layer a gradient on top, I suppose, but I don't really have a rhyme for the close. Eh, I'll just give you a boop on the nose.